Welcome back. This module in, an, in its entirety is entitled Pharmacokinetics. Um, in essence, I've broken it down into three separate lectures so that you can concentrate on one at a time, take your notes, and then move forward. The term pharmacokinetics, um, as you recall, we talked about last chapter, pharmaco is the medical term referring to pharmacology. And kinetics, you may remember, has to do with movement. So when we're talking about pharmacokinetics, we're talking about how medications move through the body. This being the first in three parts of pharmacokinetics module, we're going to focus on forms and roots of medications. So your objectives for this particular portion of the module are to describe forms of medications and to list roots of administration. As we're going through this, you may want to refer back to the notes that you took from your reading on chapter two and add to them as needed. So yes, we start out with this picture. Everybody is unique. Everybody is different. And we know that. But then when we top it off, there's a number of factors that can occur throughout the lifespan, both physiological and psychological, that affect how an individual person responds to any specific drug at any point in time in their life. So as we're looking and going through this whole idea of pharmacokinetics, you need to keep in mind that there are numerous things that affect individuals um, and medication administration. So I'm going to start off on this topic of medication forms. What I want you to do is think of um, forms of medications, ways in which medications come, and see if you, how many you can think of off the top of your head. I'll give you a few minutes to think through that, see if you can jot them down or remember them from your lecture, and then we will continue. Okay, so let's see how you did. Um, we'll start off, first off, with syrups. Um, syrups are basically a solution of water and sugar, but then we'll take in add the chemicals too. You may have had numerous cough syrups and things like that growing up, or may still continue to take them. Um, palatable, come in many different flavors, um, great for people having difficulty swallowing, um, particularly young children or the elderly who may have difficulty with a solid form of a medication. Alcoholic preparations are ones in which the medication is dissolved within alcohol. Elixirs and tinctures um, would be a common type of this. Again, cough syrups. You may be familiar with tincture of iodine or tincture of methylate used to, as, um, to treat cuts and as an antiseptic to prevent infection. 
Another form is powders. And powders are basically dried, crushed medications um, that can be reconstituted in a variety of ways. Tablets are another form. Basically, they are hard, compacted, dried medications uh, that are swallowed whole. Um, usually, we encourage people to take them along with food or water. Troches, otherwise known as lozenges, are a way in which we give medications that allows the medication to dissolve in the oral cavity. You may have taken something similar as a cough drop or Sepacol lozenge, um, otherwise known as a troche, for treating things such as a sore throat. Our next form is that of capsules. And capsules are a substance that is placed inside a gelatin shell. So it has a nice smooth coating on the outside. Usually goes down a little easier than a tablet because it is smooth on the outside. And it also works well that we can do some sustained release things in it in that you will see medications that will then dissolve at different rates within one single capsule. Enteric coated medications are those, usually a tablet, that have a special coating on the outside. And entero refers to the intestines. What it does is it keeps the medication intact until it hits the intestines, which decreases the amount of irritation to the stomach lining. So medications that can be irritants to the stomach are often prepared in this way. One thing to be careful of it's because they are coated to dissolve in the intestines. They should not be crushed or broken um, before taken. Otherwise, the medication dissolves and the enteric coating really doesn't make much of a difference. Suppositories are basically a medication that is placed within some type of a um, petroleum jelly product and that then dissolves with the body's heat and is absorbed into the mucous membranes. And we can give rectal suppositories and vaginal suppositories are probably the two most common forms. Ointments are an oily substance that the medication is placed within and it's usually applied to the skin or we also use ointments and apply them into the eyes. Transdermal, trans meaning across, dermal meaning skin, across the skin. Um, this is a method in which a medication is placed in a bandage or a patch, applied to the skin, and then allowed to absorb slowly through the skin um, into the bloodstream. It gives a nice, slow, even dose of medication so you don't get the high peaks and valleys but it does take a long time for it to get into the body. So it is a little bit of a slower onset than some of our other routes of administration. Next we'll talk about some of what's called the, often referred to as the parenteral route, paraenteral around the intestines. Um, and that would be injections, medications that are placed within a syringe and needle um, and injected into the body. The three abbreviations we have listed here would be IM, which stands for intramuscular, into the muscle, IV, representing intravenous, into the vein, and SQ, subcutaneous, which would be an injection that goes into the subcutaneous layer of the skin. Though there are other forms of injections, those are probably the three most common that we give. They give a nice rapid onset and get into the bloodstream fairly quickly. Okay, so now that we've gone and reviewed some, some of the most common forms of medications, let's see how, you're gonna, how you do with those forms. Um, I want you to take a piece of paper 
and just label 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, I'm going to show you some medications and see how you do with naming the form that they are representing. What you want to do is write down the form that represents each medication. Okay, let's see how you did. Uh, let's start down with number five. Number five is an intravenous medication being delivered. Number four, this, these are suppositories. Suppositories usually come in foil. One of the things we always have to remember to tell our patients is that they must take them out of the foil. Um, it will not absorb through the foil into the body. Number three is a capsule. Number two would be a transdermal patch in this case. And number one is probably the trickiest. You may recognize it as an inhaler, but the actual form is that of a powder. Um, what is inside that canister is a powder, and when it is um, compressed, it is mixed with um, air, and then the powder is what is inhaled into the lungs. I challenge you, um, maybe later on today or tomorrow, take a look in your own medicine cabinet and see how many different forms of medications you can name that you actually possess in your house. The second part of this section then is going to deal with roots and exactly what is a root in this case. You can see it's a place of getting from, or it's a way of getting from one place to another. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a medication route, is how does it actually get into the body, or what's the pathway it takes to get into the body. There is a chart in your book that actually gives you a number of the different routes that we have of drug administration. Most common ways we get medications into the body, of course, are the oral route. Um, that's the most convenient and most common, PO or by mouth. I'm going to pull up here, though, another way that you can help categorize routes of administration. All the ones that you see here that do not have stars are ones that go through naturally occurring holes in the body. So oral, sublingual, buccal, rectal, inhalation, and vaginal. All naturally occurring holes in the body. Versus the ones with the stars, transdermal, subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous, intraarterial, intrathecal, and topical. Either there is no hole at all in the case of transdermal or topical, or in the other ones, we are man-made holes that we are putting in the body to get the medication in. So you'll want to go and take a look over this um, and become familiar with the variety of different routes in which medications can get into the body. Um, another point on this, just remember that your quickest routes are your ones that go in by injections. And if you look down your time here, intravenous, intraarterial um, are, very, are very rapid ways of getting medications into the body. So depending on how quickly we need to get something into the body um, may determine the route of administration for our medications. 
So with that one, I conclude um, our piece on roots of administration and forms of medications. Um, by this point, you should be able to name um, some forms of medications as well as describe various routes in which we get medications into the human body.